Back to Sports Extra. That was the Appleton North dance team performing today at the Bucks game down there in Milwaukee. And March Madness is officially underway. Joining me in studio to talk some high school hoops, Jeremy Boylo. We're shaking hands now. It feels yes, good, right? Absolutely. We don't have to do this or any <laughs> of that stuff. The gyms are packed. And that was the case yesterday at sectionals all across the state, but especially that one down there in Sheboygan where your Redbirds pulled off a huge win. Pretty fun, huh? Yeah, it was great. Great atmosphere. Have, awesome having people in the, in the stands, the student sections out there and alive. And, and uh, you know, our players really felt the energy there, and I really felt that was key into helping us find a way to win. And this group, especially the seniors, they've been through a ton of things. I mean, just, a, just an abnormal high school career. And what's it been like, not only as a teacher, but as a coach, as a mentor? Because a lot of issues have been created mentally, physically, all the way across the board. I mean, the football guys had to deal with a lot of them, a short season where they played in the spring and then turned around and played in August. You know, I think that um, one thing we take away from it is you had to find a way to make things positive um, in, in trying to be mentally and physically tough, uh, getting through a lot of different things, you know, whether it's sicknesses or certain rules you have to have. You know, things last year, we, you know, we graduated two seniors. We have a lot of kids that had to go through some tough times. And I really feel like the things that we experienced last year, um, the things that we experienced early in the season, kind of uh, appreciating what we now have, really kind of uh, built into some toughness for us as we, we continued to the end of the year. Well, when the brackets came out, Everybody that I know, including all the Redbirds down there in De Pere, looked at it and said, man, this bracket is going to be tough for De Pere to get through. Not only did an upset happen on the one side, but you took care of business. And then you beat a Germantown team that not only has one of the biggest recruits in the country, but they blew you out by almost 40 to begin the year. Now, I know November basketball is nothing like March, but mentally, how did you get your girls over the top? Um, that was the second game of our season. Uh, it was... Germantown's first game of the season, uh, we knew that we were going to be playing one of the best, the best player in the state, um, uh, one of the best players I've been able to uh, coach against. And, you know, we, it was a measuring stick to kind of see where we were at right away. And uh, there were was, there was some uh, things that we knew we had to work on, and we were showing that right away where you can't, you can't let mistakes keep happening. you got to get through these things. And we were challenged right away at the beginning of the season, but we found a way um, you know, our Twitter account, we had hashtag 105. It was embarrassing for us to um, perform the way we did and the high expectations we have as a program, how our players have expectations, and that's really driven us as we move, move forward. And to be honest, you know, if that's going to happen, it happened early so we could play and, and learn from it um, the way we did uh, yesterday. Well, it was close, nip and tuck throughout, but in the second half, that's when your ladies really started to get rolling. I mean, you've got star power, and Claire Bjorgi down low makes the bucket early on, and then Oakley Wittick would hit a huge three. Yeah, I mean, these, uh, you know, we got some seniors that are just making big plays, uh, taking advantage of good opportunities with our team. Um, Oakley Wittick hit a big three. Avery Browski hit a big three. Uh, Jordan, you know, uh, got things going 18 second half points. I mean, she, she was way more assertive and, and kind of knowing, hey, I'm gonna, I'm gonna help this team. We gotta get over this hump. We gotta win this game. We want it. Um, you know, and Clara Bjorgi for a sophomore, just owning the ball with Germantown pressure and handling that really set the tone and helped us offensively. Now you mentioned that UConn recruit KK Arnold. She would give Germantown the lead, but then later, after Borowski hits the long three, Bjorgi to McKenna Siselsic, right? Yep. I got that. Okay. Got it. And then Borowski again drives the lane. She gets dropped, gets blocked, but then Jordan Melmans is there for the huge rebound and putback. And that really catapulted you late in that, that second half. Oh, absolutely. I mean, we, we had to limit them second chance opportunities if we wanted to help our chances to win, but we had to, we had to go get those second chance opportunities ourselves. Melmans from downtown gives you a six point lead with under four minutes to go. And then who else? Jordan, corner pocket, three ball good. The lead was 11. They made things a little bit interesting, but that was pretty much all she wrote because your girls hit some clutch free throws and the celebration began. Yeah, great feeling. Big time players come up in big, big moments, and uh, Jordan did that for us. And uh, what, what, a, what an exciting thing for our, our De Pere community and our girls uh, to be able to put themselves in that position to, to make it to the rush. Yeah, and you know what? That's where you will be starting this weekend. And you get the four seed. You got Kettle Moraine, who is the number one. In the other half of the bracket, we could see a team from the Fox Valley Association because Appleton East is taking on Brookfield East. Could be an 
all area great Division I final or not at all? We were hoping for the former and not the latter, but everybody has a couple losses in this one. There is no undefeated powerhouse where you go, uh-oh, we've got to go and face so-and-so. Any one of these four teams can walk away with that gold ball. 100%. I think we all, we all see that, you know, seedings could have gone anywhere on the board, one through four. Um, we're, so there's not a huge separation there. Uh, we're going to take the fourth seed as, you know, a chip on our shoulder that we're the underdog and we got something to prove because that's been our mentality ever since that Germantown game, second game of the year. We got something to prove and we're ready to go. One of five programs from our area headed to the rest. You get to sleep in your own bed and maybe take home some hardware from right across the street down there on Lombardi Avenue. Jeremy and the Redbirds, good luck this week. Thank you. All right, when we come back, it's time to wrap up the show. Three wrestling programs from our area made it to state, but the Kakana Ghosts. 